Hat, sunglasses, Pepsi, notes, sources, thick skin, check. You already know. Let's go. Golden Blooded is a college football YouTube channel for entertainment. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And let's get into our next college football video. Don't forget to send gear to represent your team. The address is P.O. Box 360, Liberty South Carolina 29657. Yes, we are still doing that. Just wanted to put that reminder in there because I haven't reminded anybody here recently. Worst case scenario happened last night. The very, very worst. I mean, worse than the worst. Nobody could have pictured, even Georgia fans, and I had some Georgia fans predicting Georgia to whoop TCU by 30, but even that didn't come anywhere close to the actual nightmare that was the national championship last night. This game was over by the second quarter. By the start of the second quarter, this game was over. You could see that TCU was not, TCU was not mentally in this game. Uh, Georgia made them tap out really, really early. They were overmatched. Georgia played their A game, and it was just an utter, utter beatdown. I mean, it, it was bad, 65-7. to 7. So Georgia sets two records, well, not two records, one record, and makes history with going back-to-back. -back. So they make history twice in the same game. Only one of eight teams that have ever won back-to-back -back national championships in college football. This dates back to the early 40s. Minnesota did it in 40 and 41. Army did it in 40 and 45. Notre Dame did it in 46 and 47. Oklahoma did it in 55 and 56. Nebraska did it in 94 and 95. USC actually did it in 03 and 04 because in 04 they were declared co-champs, but that was vacated. So technically in the record books, no, USC didn't go back to back. So technically, technically it's just seven, but I put them on the list. Alabama in 2011 and 2012. And now Georgia in 2021 and 2022. And they did it in emphatic fashion, setting a record as far as margin of victory in a national championship. I think they set a record as far as margin of victory in bowls, period. Not just the national championship. This was the biggest blowout in bowl history, 65-7. to As far as the national championship goes, the second biggest blowout was actually 2004, the game that never happened because it was vacated when USC throttled Oklahoma by 36. But remember, that game didn't happen, so it doesn't exist. It was wiped out of the record books. But it still shows you just how big of a gap that was. I mean, 65 to... I'm not even going to go through the stats. It's just plain ridiculous. And you could see that TCU... They quit. TCU quit. They, there was no hustle. There was no speed. There was no recovery. There was no physicality. There was no athleticism. Nothing was on display for TCU... And I knew it. As soon as halftime hit and we all knew the game was over, I knew it was going to happen. TCU and the Big 12 didn't belong in the playoffs. I guess the win over Michigan didn't happen. That win doesn't count, so TCU didn't belong. Listen, TCU tapped out. Georgia made them quit. Georgia came with their A++ game, and they made TCU quit. This doesn't mean TCU was a bad team and they didn't belong in the national championship. It doesn't. I'm sorry, it doesn't. And it doesn't mean that the Big 12 all of a sudden is the worst conference in the entire country. They had a bad bowl season this year, yes. But last year, it was the SEC that had a really, really bad bowl season. And it was the playoffs and national championship that bailed them out. But nobody talked about that. But this year, the Big 12 has a bad bowl season. And TCU gets absolutely throttled. And all of a sudden, the Big 12 is a bad conference. Number one... I really don't care because I'm not a conference homer. I don't understand that. I think that was the ESPN hype machine that created that whenever they got in cahoots with the SEC and created the SEC. It, remember, that didn't used to exist. It didn't. That's that's a recent thing. That hasn't always existed. But they created the SEC, SEC, SEC. And now when any, any SEC team wins, you have all the fans from the other SEC teams are, we're the best conference. You see Georgia... <laughs> They just whooped TCU. Big 12's uh, the worst conference in the nation. Our conference is the best. I, I, I just I don't understand the idea of rooting for a team that you had to play and you wanted to beat in the regular season. You wanted them to win in the postseason. And I know, I know, I kind of look like a hypocrite because I did want TCU to beat Georgia. But that had nothing to do with conference affiliation. 
I'm just an underdog type of guy. Last year, I wanted Georgia to beat Alabama, and it happened. They won their first national championship since 1980. This year, I wanted TCU to win. I've just always had that underdog mentality. I, myself, I've always been an underdog. So I can relate to underdogs more than I can to, you know, the, the dynasties and the favorites and all that stuff. Now it's big, bad Georgia. Hey, Georgia fans, get used to it. You are now going to experience the role that Alabama is used to. Alabama fans are used to being big, bad Bama. Everybody wants Bama to fail. Now everybody wants you to fail. Last year, everybody wanted you to beat Alabama. Now this year, everybody wants, well, everybody to beat you. So get used to that. I don't even know if you really care about that, but I'm just letting you know, get used to it. It is going to happen. I just can't believe the SEC fans, SEC fans, jumping on the bandwagon. Nah, we got the best conference. And I, I actually agree with that. I do think that the SEC is the best conference, but that doesn't change what your team did. Worry about your team, how good and bad your team. I'm worried about the situation that West Virginia is in. I, I don't care about the Big 12. And I'm not saying that to be mean or anything. To each their own. Every fan base should care about their own team. I'm worried about West Virginia. We just went 5-7. Five and 5-7. Seven. Five and freaking seven. I don't care that TCU just got blown out. Yes, I was pulling for them, but it didn't break my heart. Oh, man, that, that's, uh, uh, that, that broke my heart. No, it didn't break my heart. I didn't care about it that much. I was just pulling for the underdog. I am concerned about West Virginia. But it just seems like fans of teams in the SEC, they start caring about the conference more than their own team. It's like, what? That makes no sense. Are you freaking... And, oh, man, the Alabama fans. They are running rampant right now. In fact, Alabama players took to Instagram and TikTok, and they said something like this. I don't know word for word, but something like this. Well, you wanted Georgia to go down, but you didn't put Alabama in the playoffs. No dip. No dip they didn't put you in the playoffs. You had two losses. You didn't belong in the playoffs. Congratulations. You had one great game against Kansas State and blew them out. But that's it. If you look over the course of the regular season, you did not look like a playoff team. Sorry, Alabama. You did not look like a playoff team. You lost to LSU. You lost to Tennessee. Yes, both were close losses. Yes, both were on the road. Guess what? You still lost. You barely beat Texas on the road, and Texas was okay, I guess, but they weren't elite. You barely beat a bad Texas A&M at home, and there was a few other games that you didn't look particularly good. No, you didn't belong in the playoffs. One blasting of the Big 12 champion doesn't mean that you belong in the playoffs. Stop. Just, just stop. Just stop. And I guarantee you, if they would have put Alabama in the playoffs, Alabama would have gotten throttled just like TCU. Ohio State gave Georgia a game. And I was thinking about this because the transference thing really doesn't make sense in this situation. All right, think about it. Think about it. All right. So TCU beat Michigan, right? I know two pick sixes helped them out, but they created that. The defense created that. TCU beats Michigan. Michigan absolutely stumped a mud hole into Ohio State on the road. Ohio State was one field goal away from knocking Georgia out of the playoffs and them playing for the national championship. But then Georgia absolutely throttles TCU. So what, what can make sense in this situation? I tell you, I think Georgia played their C game against Ohio State. I don't think they played their A-plus game, and that's why it was so close. And then in the national championship, they played their A-plus plus game. And what happened with TCU is... They started to quit about midway, maybe late first quarter. They tapped out. Georgia made them give up. And that's a saying by Nick Saban. Elite teams, dynasty teams, great teams make other teams give up. So it gets to the point where you don't even actually have to be better than the other team. You've made them give up, so the rest of the game is easy street. That's exactly what happened last night. Georgia made TCU quit by the start of the second quarter. They tapped out, and the rest of the game was easy street. But for the rest of you fans that are fans of teams in the SEC, this this doesn't do anything for you. You didn't win a national championship. Alabama, you didn't win a national championship. You still didn't deserve to be in the playoffs. You didn't earn your way in. It is what it is. But congratulations, Georgia. Back-to-back -back national championships. And here's the thing. I actually think last year's Georgia team 
was better than this year's Georgia team. I mean, you look at last year's team, they actually mopped the floor when it came to the regular season schedule. Yes, the SEC championship game looked wonky. It, it looked like Georgia laid down for Alabama. But besides that one game, they cruised through the playoffs in the national championship. Nobody had a shot. That team was better than this team. I think they took advantage of a slightly down college football year. And that's not me trash-talking Georgia. You were the best this year, by far and away the best team. But I do think as a whole, college football teams were a little bit down when it comes to the top. There was a lot more parity, except for the national championship. There was no parity in the national championship. But as far as the actual college football season, yes, there was a lot more parity. Next year, I think Georgia could be an even better team. And their schedule sets up quite nicely for a three-peat. Nobody's ever done a three-peat. That would be making history, not tying history. Just like last night when they made history with the largest margin of victory in the national championship or any bowl period. And yes, I do believe that Georgia will be in the playoffs in 2023 as well. I mean, check out this schedule. This, this is a pretty easy schedule. Only four true road games. Here's what their schedule looks like for 2023. They start off the season with FCS UT Martin, then Ball State, then South Carolina, then UAB, then at Auburn, then Kentucky, at Vanderbilt, then you get your bye week, then you play Florida in Jacksonville, Missouri, Ole Miss, at Tennessee, and at Georgia Tech. Your four road trips at Auburn, at Vanderbilt, at Tennessee, at Georgia Tech. Really, your only tough road trip will be at Tennessee. And really, looking at the entire schedule, that might be the only game where there's even a chance of losing. I don't expect Tennessee to be quite as good as what they were this year. They're still going to be pretty decent, but that's the only game that I see for a possible loss for Georgia. That's it. So yeah, get used to it. Georgia will be back in the playoffs in 2023. So y'all let me know in the comments section, were y'all surprised by just how much Georgia dominated TCU last night? Do you think Georgia will three-peat next year? And do you think Georgia is in the midst of starting a dynasty? That's all I got for for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on my next show.